<sighs> What's going on, Spurs fans? Welcome to SSPN. I'm Ethan Quintero. And as you can tell by the title of the video, this is going to be a sad one, unfortunately, for most of us. Uh, but I'm going to stay level-headed and stay logical about my interpretation of what all went down yesterday on June 29th, 2022. Obviously, Jude's not here. Jude put his reaction to the DeJounte Murray trade up yesterday. Yet last night, I was unavailable, and today he was unavailable. So we just had to separate our videos. No drama going on behind the scenes of SSPN. Jude and I will be back to regularly scheduled programming on July 6th, I believe, uh, whenever he gets back from vacation. But for now, this is just my reaction to everything that went down. Obviously, the Spurs traded DeJounte Murray, our all-star, averaged 29-9 last year, been improving ever since we drafted him in 2016. Uh, one of the first guys that I can say I watched grow in the Spurs organization. I was 16 years old when we drafted him, and that was about right around the time that I was really getting invested in the Spurs. And one of the few guys that we've kept around this long and grew to have an impact on the team and went from base from a late round, late first round pick to an all-star. Um, so there's that personal connection, and that's what makes this difficult. But what we got back from Atlanta was Danilo, Danilo Gallinari, who was actually just waived by the Spurs, so he will not be on the roster for the actual season. And we got a pick this upcoming draft 2023 from uh, the Hornets, which is top 16 protected, so we really need them to do very well this season. We also got picks, two more first round picks from Atlanta, I believe in 20, 2025 and 2027. And then we got a pick swap as well. I believe that's how it went. If I'm wrong, go ahead and let me know in the comments. But basically we traded DeJounte Murray for three first round picks, which could turn into two um, if the Hornets obviously uh, play very badly this upcoming season. My initial reaction was probably like most of you, just sadness, frustration, asking why, why would the Spurs do this now? We've been asking them to kind of blow it up for a couple of years now, and they were refusing to do so. We were staying competitive, which I respect. I love to watch our team win and try and get better the old-fashioned way. Um, and that really set me up thinking that for the next couple of years, what we were going to do was continue down the same path of being around the 10th or 11th seed, kind of, stagnating and purgatory where we weren't that great. We couldn't get into the playoffs. We weren't bad enough to get a top three pick, but we would still draft solid players, try and find a sleeper, continue to build this team around DJ and Keldon and Devin, and then hopefully down the line, sign a big name to pair up alongside these guys and, and make a push for the playoffs. That was what I thought the timeline was. Um, then I realized that DeJounte Murray had no, intent on signing an extension once his contract was up with the Spurs. His contract lasts over the next two two years. So with that being said, the Spurs were like, okay, so he's not going to be with us long term. He was an all-star this past season, averaged 29 and 9. We can get quite a few picks from him if we trade him now. Do we do it or do we try and wait and see what happens at the end of his contract? Uh, maybe he has a change of heart. Maybe he does want to stay in San Antonio. Or, knock on wood, maybe he just takes a dip and doesn't play as well, and he's not worth as much at that point. So if we do try and trade him, we don't get as much down the road. I think the Spurs really are still fearful of what happened with LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan. We waited too long to trade both of those guys. We ended up not getting anything back for LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, we ended up just waving him. With DeMar, we basically got Thaddeus Young plus a first-round pick. We flipped Thaddeus Young for another second or a first round pick something like that so we did get capital but what i'm trying to say is we could have gotten something more had we traded him sooner we didn't trade patty mills we let him walk we could have gotten something from him we didn't trade rudy gay we have so many of these moments in our history where we weren't winning championships that we just decided to run with the guys and then ended up not getting anything in return so the spurs i'm sure were fearful of that we have ptsd of that we would rather bet that Dejounte has hit his ceiling at 25 and trade him for picks now, then hold out and either have him walk in two years for nothing or trade him for some for a lesser package in a year or two. That is their logic. I understand it from that point of view. I also get that the 2023 draft is loaded. 
So we could be making a push for a Victor Wembanyama or a Scooter Henderson or whoever may be available depends on where we fall. I understand that as well. But I do get the frustration. I do get the frustration. He's, in my mind, we were going to keep him long term. And as these guys like Devin, Primo, Keldon, uh, all these other young players that we've drafted, Sohan, Malachi, as they elevate into perhaps maybe all star level, as they evolve into their prime, DJ will be kind of leaving his prime, but he'll still be formidable enough to round out our depth chart and be a solid point guard on a championship level team. That's what I thought the timeline was. I'm assuming that's what most Spurs fans thought the timeline was, but we were wrong. They're shaking it up. We're changing it up. Brian Wright is saying, heck with the old stuff. We're jumping in into the deep end, and we're going to try and get a top pick in this next upcoming draft. We're going to play our young guys. That's the silver lining to this. The silver lining is the front office really believes in the young guys that we've drafted. We're not bringing back Lonnie Walker, so that means we're going to play Joshua Primo. We're probably going to play Malachi Bronham. I don't know if we're going to play Blake Wesley. It's too early to tell, but based on us waving Danilo Gallinari, it looks like we're going to play Jeremy Sohan too. Jakob Pertl trade is probably incoming. I don't know if that will be now or closer to the deadline. Who knows? Luckily, he's not one of those guys that can really keep a team afloat. We're not going to win games based on Jakob Pertl alone, so keeping him on the roster doesn't tell me that we're not tanking. It feels like the Spurs are are, are now going full-on tank mode, which rubs some people the wrong way. I know I don't like the idea of tanking because as a fan, you want to win, and this is going to hurt the fan base because we're so used to winning. We went 22 years of making the playoffs, and really before, the only reason we missed the year before those 22-year streak was because David Robinson got hurt. But before that, we were pretty much in the mix. I know we never won a championship before Tim Duncan, but David Robinson was a Hall of Fame player, an all-star, a guy that kept the Spurs competitive all those years. So really, we haven't had a losing streak since, what, 87? So this is just uncommon ground. It's foreign ground that we're on right now. And it's sad because everybody loved DJ. He loved the Spurs. We drafted him young. We took a chance on him, and he becomes something special. He became something special. I get the frustration, but let's try and, as a fan base, it's hard. I know some of you are probably not going to like what I'm saying right now, but let's try and think about this logically. Let's be excited about the future. Let's be excited about the future. Joshua Primo looks like the real deal. Let's have some faith in the front office. Let's, Let's hope that they made the right decision. Greg Popovich had to sign off on the trade, so obviously he thinks that this is a good move for the franchise. That's really all I got to say, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I know it's a tough time to be a Spurs fan. I know this is not what we were looking for um, this offseason. A lot of people wanted to push for DeAndre Ayton or push for Zach Levine, try and pair them alongside DeJounte Murray and build around DeJounte Murray. That's not going to happen. We are going full-blown tank mode. It's rebuild season. Stay devoted. Stay devoted. We're going to be here no matter what. Follow us on SSPN, subscribe, like the video, be in the comments section. Tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that I'm right. Do something. Uh, Also, follow and subscribe to SpursTube TV. There should be some more uh, content coming there soon, so be on the lookout for that. Follow us on Twitter. I'm Ethan underscore Quintero. Jude's not here, but go watch his video. He's at Jude McLaren. And thank thank you guys so much for getting us over that 700 subscriber mark. This has really been... Uh, an awesome journey getting to this point. Let's keep pushing it. Let's try and get to 1,000 subscribers as we enter free agency talk. Let's see what the Spurs do. I have a feeling more moves are coming. Go Spurs, go, and have a great day.